Good morning from Ironworks Speed and Custom in Bakersfield, California. This morning we're going to do a video breakdown of the build of Ron Lalo's 66 Chevy truck. Uh, we finished the truck a few years ago. It was displayed at SEMA in 2018, I believe it was. It received a Good Guys Gold Bar Award and is currently featured in Truck Hub Magazine. The truck is painted with Aston Martin green. The exterior trim is a Cerakote finish. And everything else is just kind of a black color to accentuate the rest of it. The interior is a, a, a distressed leather that has a, a diamond pattern CNC stitched into it to match the gauge cluster, the glove box, and the center console. These trucks stock really look good as it is. You just need to get them to set good, get the wheels and tires at the right size, position the wheels in the, in the wheel openings properly, and then you can kind of customize it from there. The, the truck has a bunch of small modifications to it here and there. We've moved the grill in just a little bit to kind of get rid of the bug-eyed look. The majority of the fabrication is done to the bed. We widened the bed, I believe, 3 eighths of an inch because it just didn't line up with the outside of the truck. The beds on these trucks are just a little bit narrower. So it seems ridiculous to do it, but when you look at a lot of other trucks, you'll probably see that it's just not flat down the side. The bed's a little bit narrower. But the majority of that fabrication went into the tailgate and the rear bumper. The bumper was started from a later model square body truck bumper, and the center was just built on a press brake and it was all welded together. We didn't want to have just the roll pan mini truck look. We thought the bumper was really needed to do that. The tailgate was kind of built to get rid of the chains, get rid of the just all the stuff that makes these trucks clunky. I always think the stock tailgates in these things look like a bread pan that has the, the word Chevrolet embossed in it. And so we wanted to keep the Chevrolet script in it because it's a Chevrolet, and but we wanted to carry the, the detail from the side of the bed around the back of the car. We built all of that from scratch. We've kept the hinges and did those pieces, but everything else was built. Still runs the stock tail lights, still runs a lot of those kind of pieces because Chevy did a great job on that stuff. But we just wanted to clean it up and give it a little bit more of a more rugged feeling, I guess you might say, and just use a lot of the green, the Cerakote tungsten color, and the black with the distressed leather. We went to pretty long lengths to make sure that all the blacks are the same, just so there's consistency in those parts. The mirrors on the driver's side is just a cut down stock mirror. We didn't want to put a Camaro mirror on it. We didn't want to put a new car mirror on it. We really felt like everything needed to stay similar to that to maintain what Chevy did a great job on. The brakes have a custom color caliper that just really contrasts the whole thing. That's the only place that color is used just to make the Willwood calipers stand out. That's kind of a supercar thing in my mind. As, as far as the rest of it, it's an 875 horsepower Wagner's supercharged engine, LS3. It has a TCI six-speed transmission. It has an auto rad core support and radiator. The inner fenders are raised up to allow the truck to ride at this height. The firewall is smoothed up. When we started on this truck, there was not any aftermarket hood hinges. So we made the hood hinges to just hold a little tighter gap than the stock stuff did. The bed slats were deleted from wood to just do a little bit more of a painted surface and not just have the typical wood with bed strips. The, the thinner strips in the bed are actually shelving uprights that we found on McMaster car. We cut them down and plasma cut the center strips that are wider to have the bolt pattern that is in the shelving uprights. And then mini tubbed the wheels to put the 345 rear tire in it and got the thing set down on the ground because that's really the most important thing is the stance. Since we feel the need that stance is so important, at the beginning of every car we work on, we mock up the car at ride height with the tire sizes that we intend to run and really stand back with a jack and blocks of wood to really get the axle positioning correct, to really get the stance of the, of the car or the truck really nailed. Because you can have a car with an ugly paint job or no paint job or an ugly color and even ugly wheels. And if the car sits right and the wheels are proportioned correctly, it really just makes everything. From there on out, you it just becomes important to 
nail the rest of those items in, in whatever consistent style or form you're trying to do as you build the car. In the interior of the car, we changed the dash from the 66 to, I believe it was a 64. And we machined the gauge cluster and the glove box and the switch panel to hold the AC vents and also hold the switches that we sell on our website. We also did the same thing in the center console to somewhat kind of tie the modernized interior in the truck to make it kind of supercar-esque. So maybe it's a super truck. Carrying the diamond pattern from the glove box, the gauge cluster, the center console, the seats, all that together just kind of brings that same pattern consistently through the interior. The distressed leather gives it a contrast between the really shiny paint and the distressed interior. The rest of it is just a heavily modified stock bench seat with a, um, the center console and the insert in it to control the AC. Everything on the interior and the exterior is painted that tungsten Cerakote color. The engine bay and the interior are painted a flat version of the exterior Aston Martin color. The bed slats, all those things are carried with that same green color. That's really the, the basis of the truck. You know, there's a lot of little tricks here of welding the seams together on the bed to clean up that line. And like we went over with the tailgate, the tailgate's probably the most elaborate thing along with the engine bay. But other than that, it's just a pile of a lot of little details to make the dash swap possible, to make the gauge cluster and the glove box upgrade possible, putting the center console into the stock seat, and just cleaning up a lot of little things in the truck to move the headlights back, tuck the bumpers, narrow the bumper. At the end of the day, there's just a lot of details that culminate in making this truck what it is. In combining what Ron Lalo's vision was for the truck and taking what Chevrolet did a very good job on and tweaking some things to get the ride height and the stance and bringing that all together, I think those are the parts that make this truck come together as one cohesive unit and seems to be appealing to the masses that have seen the truck. We strive to put this kind of attention to detail and thought consistency into every car that we build from start to finish. And that's probably what makes this truck different than some of the others. I thank you for watching the video and hope you enjoy it. And thank you for your time.